Einstein was not the biggest fan of quantum mechanics, and that's pretty ironic considering he is one of the founders of quantum mechanics. Uh, but when in 1905, uh, Einstein made a giant splash, he, he did lots of awesome things and set the, the basics for several fields of physics, you know, minor accomplishment. Uh, one of the things he did was uh, demonstrate the existence of atoms. And the other thing he did was introduce the concept of quantization of radiation. He said radiation itself, light itself, is made of tiny little quantized bits that we now call photons. And Einstein was a major player in the early development of quantum mechanics. He was a big supporter of Louis de Broglie, who suggested that matter itself also has a wave nature. Uh, he was very interested in the wave-particle duality of reality. He, he was a major uh, a figure and voice in the development of quantum mechanics. But then quantum mechanics started to move in a direction that he felt was incomplete, that he felt was wrong. And one of the first signs uh, that to Einstein that quantum mechanics wasn't exactly on the right track was the appearance of two things, the appearance of probabilities and the appearance of uncertainty. Now, the, insert, the appearance of probabilities, this is again something that Einstein himself led in his explanation for what we call the photoelectric effect. It involved a probabilistic description of what's happening, and same thing for Brownian motion. Uh, Einstein was very, very used to the idea of probabilities and uncertainty and, and uh, randomness. Uh, but what got at Einstein was that as we were developing quantum mechanics, and not I was not included in that, just to be clear, but, but we in the general sense of scientists and physicists, as we were developing quantum mechanics in the early 20th century, it seemed to be what at first appeared that uh, when probabilities and randomness first appeared, it seemed like, oh, okay, okay, so the subatomic world is just a little bit crazy and it's a little bit hard to keep track of. So we have to develop these probabilistic rules uh, to get a handle on what's going on so we can make progress. Like, uh, okay, when we when we shoot an electron through, through a, a double slit, we don't know exactly where the electron's gonna go. So we're gonna de develop some probabilistic way and techniques for describing where the electron might go. Okay, no big deal. We use probabilistic uh, techniques all the time in physics when stuff is just getting complicated and it's too difficult to follow the nitty gritty and, and you just want to get some general sense. But in all the other areas of physics, even though you might have some rules of probability uh, that describe uh, the broad patterns, underneath it all, you know that there is some real physics happening, that there is some determinism, that there is cause and effect, uh, that the appearance of probabilities and randomness is just because you're dealing with a large complicated systems. But if you were to zoom down, if you had enough uh, brain power and observational power and computational power, you could follow the individual trajectories of all the particles and you would know the true physics is down here, uh, but you just need a probabilistic description up here. But as we were developing quantum mechanics, it was becoming increasingly clear that there was no like core of deterministic real physics happening in the center of the subatomic world, that it was just probabilities. And that the major figures involved in the development of quantum mechanics like Heisenberg and Bohr and, and Pauli and Dirac were just fine with the probabilities and said that we didn't need a deeper theory underneath this, that we, didn't, uh, we shouldn't try to understand what's actually happening in the subatomic world, we can't visualize it, that it's all just probabilities, man, that th this is the ground physics. Einstein had a big objection to that because he said, look, every other time in the history of physics, when we have approached a problem and used probabilities and uncertainties, what we're doing is we're just covering up a deeper layer of true underlying physics and then it gets too hard to keep track of the true underlying physics so we have to introduce probabilities. But underneath there's real physics. And now you're telling me that there's no underneath? That there's no core? 
That when you bite into that Easter bunny, it's a hollow one, not a filled one? That it's all just the shell, that it's all just probabilities? No, he didn't like that. He didn't like that. And this is why he said, God does not play dice. He said, no, no, no. Quantum mechanics is incomplete. That when we see probabilities, when we see uncertainties, this is just a symptom, a sign that quantum mechanics is missing a deeper theory of nature, that there is something more fundamental happening, that there is a, a deeper, more core a truth to nature, if you will, and we're just missing it, and that the trajectory that quantum mechanics was taking in the 1920s and 30s, where it was just all probabilities and all uncertainty all the time as a fundamental facet of reality, this annoyed Einstein to no end. He went to his grave. He went to his grave believing that quantum mechanics was incomplete, that we were missing something. And to be perfectly honest, that, that little itch, that little whisper that maybe quantum mechanics is incomplete still persists to the present day even a hundred years later. Because yeah, we may be used to quantum mechanics by now. We may be okay with quantum mechanics. We, we use quantum mechanics all over the place. It is well tested. It has stood up to a century's worth of experiments and all that. But it still does feel like something is missing. Because we can't get around the probabilities. We can't get around the uncertainties. And we don't really have a firm explanation as to why. The subatomic world is, is so foreign to us, so alien to us, that we can't really grapple with it in the way that we can grapple with other physical theories. And so even though quantum mechanics appears to be correct, and in, in as far as we can tell, it is a correct theory of nature, it doesn't explain its own features. It doesn't explain why we have randomness. It doesn't explain why we have probabilities at the subatomic level. It just simply says, Randomness, probabilities are a fact of nature. But if that feels unsatisfying, you are in good company because Einstein himself totally agrees with you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter to see how you can support the show. And please like, share, and subscribe to all the usual YouTube stuff.